Well, greetings, Series 10 test takers. This is Dean Tenney coming to you from my studio here in uh, fabulous uh, Las Vegas. Been meaning for a long time to get up a uh, Series 10 practice test for you. So the best free supplement to your paid study materials is my YouTube channel. But uh, a good uh, paid supplement, good investment would be a Kaplan Cubic. With my 10% discount code, Guru10 at, discount, at uh, checkout, you can get any Kaplan product and service, including this, for uh, 10% off. That brings it in at about $115. Uh, for that commercial, uh, Kaplan allows me to give you free look on questions and content. And so here we go. Uh, question, oh, uh, question one. An issuer may direct sales of a new issue to all the following except. So this is asking you what is a restricted person in terms of IPO allocation, and that's going to be officers of the managing underwriting, right? Employees of the broker dealer. So D as in dog. Question two, which of the following is not a characteristic of owning a limited partnership? A flow through of income expenses to the partners? Yes. An investment managed by others? Yeah, the general partner. Uh, legislative risk? Yeah, there are tax advantages that flow through, for example, the Congress could certainly change. What Congress giveth, Congress can taketh away. You don't have tax-free income. You have tax advantage, but not tax-free income. That would be immunity. So the answer is D is in dog. You know, as I say uh, in these exams, what you should do is hit pause, answer, hit play, and then see if your answer uh, conforms to mine. And we'll see when we get all done if uh, who is right or wrong. So uh, that's kind of the game on these uh, practice exams. Uh, question three, a variable annuity has a guaranteed rate of return, flunk the entire exam. Uh, a high degree of liquidity, no. Fixed payments, once it has been annuitized, uh, has different investment options known as SEP accounts, right? Uh, the payments when you annuitize can vary based on the assumed interest rate. So uh, D is in dog, D is in dog. Uh, to determine whether a registered rep traded excessively, that's called churning in a customer's accounts, uh, regulators primarily de examine whether the transaction maxed the investor's objective, the representative acted with discretion, received compensation, customer approved the transactions in written form. I think given that answer set, uh, A is our best answer. Uh, question five, your firm, a market maker in WXYZ stock, receives a customer order to sell 2,000 shares in a Rule 144 transaction. Your firm must play, place the order with another market maker? No. We're allowed to uh, purchase 144 stock coming off restriction as a principal, so the answer is B. Uh Question six, Paul, a representative in your office is interested in buying XYZ stock for several clients over which he has discretionary authority as well as for his own account. He has spoken to an equity trader, your firm, who indicated they had received a substantial order, ooh, kind of looks like front running perhaps, for XYZ stock during the morning training and was told to beat the volume weighted average price by the buy side trader, uh-oh. So in other words, you know what the best execution is looking for. This has happened, unfortunately, in the real world. You know, you got to believe in human depravity, original sin on the uh, series uh, 10. Usually the consequence uh, in the example I just gave you, a real world example, is that they, uh, the institutional investor who found this out actually just didn't trade with them anymore. So <laughs> you ended up losing the, one of the clients' uh, largest clients of the firm. Uh, yeah, you should not allow Paul to place order on, on behalf of the clients or himself, right? We should not be trading ahead of customers. There's two problems here, and we shouldn't be using the trying to beat whatever our best execution metric is that we know the customer would find acceptable in terms of execution. Uh, under the amended books and records rule, all the following are events that trigger the requirement that firms finish an account record information to the customers except. So under what circumstances are we giving a customer a copy of the either the existing new account form or amended? Uh, no, A doesn't trigger the the requirement. It requirement is that opening or change in the account customer address or customer name. So 
Uh, it's not so much you know the except in this question that you know B, C, and D would be or tri would trigger that uh, requirement. So be careful on the accepts. You don't take away from the except the untruthful thing because what you really want to focus on as a test taker is knowing the truthful things. Uh, I haven't had anybody tell me they've had to do this in a long, long time on debrief. It's mainly recognition to know the Uniform Practice Code. Corporates and munis have 30-day months, 360-day years. Settlement is T plus two. So this is an MNS bond, a corporate bond. The uh, accrued interest is paid by the buyer to the seller. So mainly recognition, back office stuff. A corporate bond paying interest on March 1st and September 1st is uh, purchased on May 19th. So uh, settlement is going to be Saturday, Sunday, Monday. What would that be? Monday would be the day before settlement. Tuesday is going to be settlement. Tuesday, May 23rd. So you're going to owe me for uh, all of March. When I got paid on March 1st, that was not for March 1st. That was for the previous period. So you owe me for all of March. That's 30 days. Uh, you owe me for all of April, 30 days, and up to but not including settlement, which is 22 days because settlement was the 23rd. So that's 82 days. And again, I haven't had anybody on debrief tell me they have to do anything other than recognition on that. Uh, which of the following securities would most likely have the lowest expense ratio? Well, boy, you should know that any kind of a variable annuity is going to have the expenses associated with an insurance product and the expenses associated with an investment product. So B and C should have gone out pretty quickly. And then mutual funds are being actively managed. And for the most part, the exchange traded funds are not being actively managed. What I mean by that is you're going to have more tax efficiency and the lower expense structure. And the way I always say it is there is a problem with having monkeys harvest bananas, they eat the product. So the ETF, yeah, well, outside of the test environment, there are actively traded uh, ETFs, but inside the environment, the testing environment, lower cost structure to an ETF, most expense ratio. Uh, question 10, under the USA Patriot Act, which of the following is a five-year record? Uh, you know, most of the brokerage firms, very few are lifetime uh, a little more, but a lot less than three is six. I think of those as item of original entry. And then the vast majority are three. Customer complaints are four. Uh, but under the Patriot Act, we're, you know, getting your picture ID. And this is about, you know, anti-money laundering. And that's going to be the uh, five-year record. So it's this thing about the picture ID. Now remember in our WSPs, we have to have procedures for closing accounts that we're not uh, able to verify. By the way, verification requires a picture ID. So that's what we want from the uh, customer. MNO Securities is a broker dealer providing services to several investment advisors in exchange for directed brokerage business. This sounds like soft dollars. If any of those investment advisors are offered the opportunity to attend a several uh, cybersecurity fora, fora, fora held in various parts of the United States under the soft dollars, that's what section 2080 is, uh, it would be permitted as long as the only payment was for registration costs. What this is testing you on is you're not allowed to pay travel as a soft dollar cost. You can pay for seminar registration, but not travel. So the answer is A. Uh, I would know the other thing you can't pay is furniture and uh, rent. Under MSIB Rule G31, the anti-reciprocal rule, that means we can't demand uh, business. I can't say to uh, Franklin, for example, if I'm selling a lot of the Franklin tax-free funds on the retail side, then go to Franklin and say, hey, we want you to do those uh, portfolio managers to buy the mini bonds from our bond desk. So under MSRB Rule G31, the anti-reciprocal rule, a mutual fund would be permitted to select a municipal firm to affect its portfolio transactions based on well, again, if they call me and say, hey, Dean, I know you're licensed to have the proper registration to not only sell our mutual funds, and thanks for being a top producer, but could you pick up some bonds for us? That's not a problem. So if they're doing that based on execution cap cap capability or research or financial services, that's fine. What I mean, what this is basically saying is I can't hold a mutual fund hostage for my retail production and their fund with uh, trading from their portfolios. So one, two, and three.
Well, I apologize for that uh, <laughs> gap there. I had to answer an email. I'm trying to get better at editing. So you can tell sometimes my editing isn't what it should be. It's my New Year's resolution. But anyways, uh, question 13, a customer's long 500 shares in cash count, short 200 shares in the same stock. So he's net long 300. So if he sells 500, it's going to be 300 long, 200 short. And I'd be more prepared, not so much for this question, as to know that the customer can't short into a tender offer. So if ABC makes a D, is there's a tender offer, ABCD, he could tender 300 shares. Uh, there has been a second serious violation of rules by an associated person. What is the severest thing FINRA can do? You should definitely know FINRA is a self-regulatory organization. They can't throw you in jail. They don't have a gun. The most serious thing is bar you. And that means not only can you be a broker, other brokers cannot uh, associate with you. So that's the uh, most severe thing they can do. Uh, I'm trying to blow these things up as big as possible because I know some people are using, you know, smartphone. And you probably should be your desktop, but uh, that's why sometimes it doesn't fit on the screen. Uh, an agent 15 has recommended investments in the XYZ fund family to his customer for 10 years. He is uh, referred by one of his customers to a prospect who's inherited 500000 as a beneficiary of a life insurance. The prospect tells the agents she's never invested in the market before and is risk adverse. Ooh, and wants safety a principle with uh, liquidity or second priority, first priority with liquidity second. Agent recommends the following uh, investments. The XYZ Dow government bond fund B shares 200, XYZ large cap growth and income B shares, and uh, liquid uh, reserve money market, 150. This recommendation is uh, unsuitable, right? I mean, it didn't rec her two things were risk adverse and liquidity. So, you know, I think the, the only thing that works there, suitable because liquidity, no. Yeah, by the way, on the test, if we get a choice of unsuitable, you know, we would look at it in total and it went, you know, Sesame Street trick. If you get suitable, suitable, suitable. We're usually testing you as a supervisor on recognizing unsuitable transactions. So, you know, uh, A, it didn't uh, satisfy, satisfy her, her objectives. So here's another one kind of along the similar lines in terms of question 16, right? Sesame Street trick, one of these things is not like the other. Uh, a repurchase agreement where we agree to buy back securities from a customer. That's what repo means, agreeing to buy back securities. Uh, who have purchased non-exempt securities, right? So what this is, if you're doing a repo, you're actually holding the customer harmless, and that would be prohibited. Prohibited. A 17, a registered rep in your branch office received a call, followed up with a detailed letter and professional looking sales brochures from a general partner, Wildcat Oil and Drilling Limited Partnership, sponsoring a private placement. The GP is offering the representative exceptional direct payout for arranging a subscription. To test the waters, the representative sends one of the provided brochures to his most likely customer with a note that says, this investment looks uh, right up your alley. You would learn of this as a sales supervisor uh, you would be most concerned with. The firm's lines of business were not checked. Uh, I don't even see here where this is on the approved product list of the firm. So uh, the fact that no one in the branch has experience with exploratory wildcat drilling programs, uh, the emphasis and training of your branch rep has received concerning partnerships. Uh, I think the unapproved, uh, unapproved uh, failure to obtain approval to send that uh, out, right? I mean, you know, so I'm going to say uh, D. We'll see when we score it up. I do teach the 10 and I am familiar with this Q bank. So I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to get most of them, if not all of them, right? But we'll, we'll see. Time will tell. Time will tell. Question 18, a municipal dealer has a control relationship with the issuer. So, you know, what that means is that, uh, for example, our CEO sits on the city council. You know, a uh, registered rep wishes to purchase the bonds of the issuer for a customer's discretionary account. Very testable. We cannot use our discretionary authority when there's a control relationship. This just isn't in municipals, by the way. You know, FINRA, oh, for every municipal rule, there's the equivalent FINRA rule. I think a good example here would be uh, Merrill Lynch and Bank of America. You know, if I'm a Merrill Lynch broker and 
I say, yeah, you've been following the bromance between uh, Berkshire Hathaway and uh, Bank of America, between, uh, you know, Brian Monahan, our CEO of Bank of America, the holding company, and Berkshire Hathaway. You know, I think you should uh, pick up some uh, t uh, 10,000 shares of uh, Bank of America. And you say, well, Dean, I don't know why you're bothering me. You have discretionary authority. I said, well, I'm not allowed to use my discretionary authority. Uh, I have to have uh, client permission when there's a control relationship. So, D. Uh, question 19, unless an exception is available, caring firms must perform a reserve computation. So every Friday, once a week, we're going to figure out what uh, we owe the customers as a broker dealer versus what they owe us. And then Tuesday morning, within one hour, we're going to have that money in the reserve account. The assumption here is, you know, we get shut down. The SIPC trustee could pay our customers, runs out of money, says, hey, where's the reserve? And that will be there. So it is weekly, weekly. In a margin account of customers long 200 shares currently trading at uh, 35. So that's going to be $7,000. Under federal rules, minimum maintenance is 25%. So 25% of $7,500 is $1,750. Uh, I would also know in margin that debit by 0.75 is market value maintenance long. And I would definitely know house requirements could be more stringent. I would know that in a short account, it's going to be credit by 1.3 to market value maintenance, and it's 30%. And then remember, the house requirement on the short side could be uh, more stringent as well. House requirements can always be more stringent, just can be more lenient than the broker dealers, the house requirement. So we, let me say that again. I'm not sure I said that correctly. House requirements can always be more stringent than the SRO uh, minimums, right? So we can have higher than 25 long, higher than 30 short uh, if we choose to. The term takedown, the term takedown in the municipal debt business means the largest part of the spread which represents the revenue derived from the sale of the municipal securities in a primary transaction. If the municipal bonds are sold by a member of the syndicate, the seller would be entitled to the full takedown. The firm is taking down the bonds from the book runner or underwriter at a discount. If the bonds are sold by a municipal securities dealer that is not a member of the syndicate, that seller receives only the portion of the takedown known as the selling concession, right? So I would be a selling group member and uh, I would get what's called the concession. Now, I, dealer's allowance is more often known as the concession. I would also know that if you're, again, you're a selling group member of some syndicate, you're not a member of the syndicate and you're not at risk for unsold securities. Now, if I am a syndicate member and I sell the bonds through my own distribution network, I would make both the total takedown, the additional takedown and the selling concession. That would be the total takedown. So here it's a C. Uh, capital gains by investment companies are distributed annually, annually. All the following uh, 23, all the following straight statements regarding section 529 plans are true, except the contribution are made with pre-tax dollars. And that is not true. Anyone can make the contribution true. Uh, the 520 main may also cover uh, Coverdale. That's true. The uh, earnings accumulate tax-free. The money is used for qualified education. That, too, is true. Uh, question 24. Securities purchased in a negotiated municipal bond uh, offering are sold. Each of the following would be disclosed on the customer confirmation, except the initial offering price of each serial maturity. Yep. The native lien underwriter. Eh. The underwriting spread, eh. the uh, fees uh, earned by the syndicate members. No, the thing that's not going to be on there is the name of the lead underwriter. So. Question 25. A customer calls your branch and says he's lost the confirmation of a municipal bond trade that was uh, executed last week. Under MSRB rules, you must uh, provide the customer with a duplicate confirm five business days of the call. Five business days of the call. 
Question 26. A registered rep has written an article about internet investing for individual investors, which appears in a national business magazine. Woohoo! Kudos to that rep. The article must be approved by FINRA. No. It must be approved by a designated supervisor. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, approved by a designated supervisor, only specific. No, it's got to be approved. Retained for three years. Yeah, we said the vast majority of brokerage from records are three years. So two and four, two and four. Question 27, which of the following forms of soft dollar compensation by a broker dealer to a buy side investment firm is not allowable? Under uh, the provision safe harbor, safe harbor is a legal term for how to stay out of trouble legally, whether it's soft dollars or whatever the legal thing we're talking about. Section 28E, uh, registration fees, we said, okay. Research reports are okay. We said travel expenses, second time we've seen this, are not bueno. So remember, it's travel, furniture, rent uh, are prohibited, are not allowed. So C. Uh, question 28, a principal officer of a member firm must attest and certify to FINRA that the firm is in compliance with research analyst uh, conflicts of rules annually, annually. Uh, question 29, Lancaster York Securities is about to release a research report on Ethnix Energy Group and chooses to show the report to EEG officials to verify the accuracy of facts of the soon uh, to be released report. So we can ask them to verify facts. We can't give them editorial control of the research product. Lander Castor York is required to leave which of the following from the report before showing it to EEG. Well, remember, we don't want them to know whether we're <laughs> good news or bad news, right? So the research summary, the rating and price targets, yeah. All we're supposed to let them do is, you know, verify the facts. Uh, which of these is true regarding restrictions of research analyst? A research analyst cannot make a public appearance during the cooling off period. That's true. A research analyst is not allowed to participate in roadshows related to investment banking transactions. That's true. Investment banking personnel cannot direct a research analyst to engage in marketing activities. You know, the research can't be under the supervisory control of investment banking. So three is true. The issuer cannot be promised favorable research or editorial control. I think we just talked about this earlier. One, two, three, and four. Thirty-one. A broker dealer has a subsidiary investment advisor structured as partnership, which loan money to a customer to buy recommended securities that are certainly unethical. Thirty-two content published on social media that allows for others to comment, reuse, or like is considered to be interactive content. Now we have static content and content when it comes to social media and interactive content. This is interactive uh, content. Uh, Gomez, question thirty-three is an older investor looking to enhance yield and return on his portfolio. Reaches goal of fully retiring at sixty-six years of age. His financial advisor has brought up the benefits of investing in a master limited partnership. Which of the following is most applicable to this sales scenario? Uh, the investor must be made aware that publicly traded partnership units represent the equity capital of a business and carry a level of risk substantially similar to that of common stock and a more suited for investors comfortable with the risks involved. That sounds pretty, pretty damn good. Uh, the investor must be made aware that he will receive a schedule K one, which will simplify and reduce his tax burden. We don't know that the investor is liable to the extent of his investment in the MLP and has the burden of some, no, you should definitely know C is just, you know, ridiculous. Uh, the investor must be made aware schedule K one, but no, no, it's, you know, a, yeah, a disclosure. Thirty-four. In which of the following situations may a broker dealer enter an order for a customer to sell a stock long? So we need to recognize that we need to have uh, the stock, right? Uh, the broker dealer has reason to believe the stock owns the uh, customer owns the stock and will deliver promptly. Indeed, the security is carried in the customer's account. We know he's got it because we can see it in his account. Yeah, that works. 
Uh, the customer owns a bond convertible and has issued conversion instructions. Be careful on that. The customer is not going to be considered along in Roman numeral three unless he's issued the conversion instructions. Uh, four, the customer owns a call option and again has exercised the call. Be careful. If he hasn't ex exercised the call, then it's not going to be considered along. So here, uh, three and four are problematic, but he has issued the proper instructions or exercise. So it's one, two, three, and four. Uh, question 35, under adverse market condition, it is not unusual for mutual fund investors who have been investing on a regular basis to cease or reduce their level of financial commitment. This can have the effect of, yeah, more money going out than in, right? Net redemptions. Uh, you know, there's the, what makes NAV go up and down is the portfolio of securities going up or down. Uh, which of the following falls under the internal filing requirements under FIN rules regarding communications with the public? A uh, reprint of an article that has not been independently prepared, indeed. Uh, one. Uh, two, an advertisement regarding uh, for recruiting registered reps. Yes. I would also know that the recruitment ad is the only ad that can be run blind. Blind meaning we don't clearly and prominently disclose the name, address, and telephone number of the broker dealer, right? So that's two. Uh, tombstones are not considered to be advertisements of securities, right? If you see a tombstone, it says this is neither an offer to sell nor a solicitation to buy. So it's one and two, one and two. I would definitely know, would definitely know that uh, simplified arbitration is uh, $50,000. I'd also know it's one arbitrator and uh, start to finish it's uh, 30 days. Uh, no appeal to arbitration. I also know that. A general securities registered rep, that's a Series 7, has been called up for active duty in the Armed Forces of the United States. The representative wants his fully licensed registered assistant to serve as his customer during his deployment. He agrees to pay the assistant from the commissions generated, if any. This arrangement is, uh, this is uh, permitted, as long as it's in the firm's uh, written supervisory procedures which is uh, D. Yeah, key point, the assistant's fully registered, so. Uh, question 39, issuers of municipal fund securities are exempt from all the following except uh, daily calculation of the NAV. Uh, no, Blue Sky, they're federally covered securities under Uniform Securities Act. So Blue Sky are state registration requirements. Uh, mutual funds don't have that uh, federally covered securities, the bucket that includes federal covered securities is New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, mutual funds, and Reg D private uh, placements. If a, a member fee firm has fee-based accounts, its supervisory procedures should include a periodic review of those accounts. Yeah, absolutely. A review of any changes in the customer's objective. Absolutely. A comparison of a fee charge to what would have been charged on a commission basis. Yeah, we got to make sure that uh, we're not doing reverse churning. Reverse churning is putting a customer into a wrap account when he would have been better to pay a la carte, right? So, you know, maybe he's better staying in that model than the uh, wrap version. So one, two, and three. You know, uh, Reg A is one of the safe harbors under 33, right? This allows us to sell... Uh, brand new securities to the public without making an S-1 registration statement. And so we have two tiers here. Uh, the first tier, tier one, is a maximum of $20 million in a 12-month period. And I would know the most we can raise is uh, $75 million. Once we go into two tier, there's going to be requirements in terms of qualifying uh, investors. So here it's a maximum of uh, $20 million in the 12-month period. I think we've seen a version of question 42 a couple of times. I told you it's very testable. I gave you a registered rep with discretionary authority at Merrill Lynch. He needs customer consent before purchasing Bank of America, right? Because there's a control relationship. A, very testable. Under federal rules, all the following are included on the order ticket, the order ticket. This isn't the confirmation. This is the order ticket. 
And the other order ticket, we're not going to have the disclosure of whether we're a market maker in the security bought or sold. Question 44, a seasoned penny stock investor is looking to open an account at your firm with a view to continue trading in low price speculative securities. The branch office manager explains the representative to open this new account of require uh, account requires a suitability analysis, uh, C. If a registered rep wishes to invest directly uh, with an issuer by purchasing 50,000 of the issuer's unregistered securities, which of the following statements is true, the employing firm must be notified. C. Uh, question 46, a member firm may be exempt from 15.3-3 customer protection rule in deciding to approve exempt status of the firm, FINRA considers which of the following are each of the following except. Uh, yeah, it's not, you know, how much insurance you, you know, insurance you cover. No, no, no. It's the type of business you conduct. You know, are you doing like limited broker dealer stuff like just partnerships, for example? The firm's procedures, then current financial. Yeah, it's not A, not A. Remember, you're not trying to focus on that, but I would actually know that the uh, you know broker dealers are required to have surety bonds in general, right? That covers the broker dealer and the employees. Uh, it's based on the firm's net capital and it has to be reviewed uh, annually. Question forty-seven: You dream of this? This is a layup. Excessive activity in a customer's account, primarily for the purpose of generating excess commission. That's called churning. Selling dividends is a big no-no. That's a violation of the code of conduct as well. That's using the impending X date as an artifice. Hypothecation is not anything wrong with that. That's pledging the securities as collateral for loan in a margin account. And, and commingling, we can't commingle customers' money and securities, but not broker, dealer, and customer securities. So uh, the answer here is D. On Thursday, March 17th, question 48, a customer enters an order to buy 20,000 of a 5.5% municipal bond maturing in 15 years the regular way. So regular way settlement is T plus two. So Friday, Monday is when it's going to settle. The bond pays interest on January 1st and July 1st. How many days of accrued interest uh, will the customer pay? Again, I think it's unlikely they're going to make you calculate on your series 10, the number of days of accrued interest. But remember, you should know it's based on 30-day months, 360-day years. The buyer pays the seller. So if I'm the one selling this bond, the last time I got paid was January 1st. So you're going to owe me for all of January, all of February, and up to, but not including settlement, which is going to be uh, Tuesday. So there are going to be 20 days there. So 30, 30, 60 plus the 20 is uh, 80. Well, I hope that, uh, you know, you're operating from abundance and maybe you can see a question like this fills up your screen. Now, it's partly filling up your screen because I'm blowing it up uh, for purposes of this uh, explication. So hopefully you can see a little better uh, than you otherwise would. Anyways, uh, 49, what are the following statements regarding municipal broker dealer relationships with investment companies are true? So it sounds like it might be that anti-reciprocal thing again. Uh, Roman number one, a municipal broker dealer may not solicit transactions for the account of an investment company in return for research and related services. No, that's not demanding. That's trying to win the business the old-fashioned way. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Two, a municipal broker dealer may not solicit transactions for an investment company in return or agree to sell or attempt to sell the units of the uh, investment company. That is indeed true. Remember, that's what the whole thing is about, anti-reciprocal. So two is true. Uh, three, a municipal broker dealer may not solicit transactions for the account of an investment company in return for municipal finance services uh, rendered. A municipal broker dealer may not solicit transactions in return. Well, it doesn't sound like I'm demanding that, right? May not solicit. Solicit's fine. I just can't demand. Uh, four, a municipal broker dealer may solicit transactions for the investment company in return for the timely execution offered by that investment company. So they're asking what is true and two and four. Boy, this one, the grammar is atrocious on this, but it's a two and four. Uh, 
Uh, question 50, a client of a broker dealer turns in order to purchase 10,000 shares. 10,000 shares is the definition of a block trade. You know, so sometimes we don't want to do a block in the auction. We'll do it off the floor, print it to the tape. Uh, so it's a B. Uh, 51, under a New York Stock Exchange Rule 127, a block of stock is defined as a quantity having a market value of $200,000 or more. Uh, all of these statements are true concerning stabilizing bids, except, except. Uh, market makers may not put up a non-stabilizing bid and offer at the same time as a stabilizing. Yeah, that'd be market manipulation. A is true. Prior written notification before entering the first stabilizing bid is required. That's true. A single market maker is permitted. That's true when testable, right? Only one of us is allowed to enter than one member of the syndicate, known as the stabilization agent. That's true. Uh, four, no indication that a stabilized bid is necessary on the trading system. That is absolutely false, right? Fifty-three. Which of the following persons are restricted persons? Restricting meaning they can't have IPO allocations. Under FINRA rules concerning or covering restrictions placed on a purchase and sale of IPO. So again, we're being asked what are restricted persons in terms of IPO allocation. Uh, immediate family members, right? So brother, yeah, Roman number one. Brother-in-law, yes. Spouse of a registered rep, yes. An uncle is not an immediate family member. Now be careful. You know, the uncle could slide back into that category if they're financially dependent. For in this scenario, it's one, two, and uh, three. Uh, question 54, which of the following forms is used in connection with a reggae offering? That's going to be form 8A, form 8A. Uh, 55, a registered rep, rep works from his home with supervision of the location performed by the branch manager whose principal office is in a nearby town. Both locations are registered as branch locations. So they're both properly registered. So that means both locations may be advertised to the public as branches, including signage, right? So no problem there. It's not like it's, uh, you know, it's transparent that it's a branch and business is being conducted during normal business hours. A member firm receives a signed proxy from a customer who failed to indicate how her shares held in street name are to be voted. Then we vote the shares as recommended by management, the issuer D. If Alpha Enterprises wants to open a cash account, a member a firm must have all the following documents except, well, we need a new account form for everybody. Yeah, we need a copy of the corporate resolution saying which corporate officer is going to be allowed to churn, I'm sorry, trade the account. And we need a uh, copy of the cor corporate charter. We do not need a hypothecation agreement. That would only be necessary if they're opening a margin account, and then that would have to be specifically permitted within the corporate charter. So the answer is uh, D. Uh, to terminate 12B1 plan charges, a registered open-end management company must obtain the majority vote of the shares. I would prefer it says shares, but shareholders is acceptable and uh, the uh, uh, outside board. So those are who are not affiliated. So it's one and three, one and three. Uh, question 59, which of the following usually results from pre-refunding of municipal securities that have call protection, right? So that means the issuer is raising money in advance of the uh, call date. It's going to go into an escrow account. So now the old existing bonds are uh, AAA, right? Because, I mean, the municipal issuer ha owes, owes the money, has the uh, money. So uh, I think that that would increase the quality and marketability, right? Because now they're AAA. D. Unless otherwise indicated, a quotation on municipal security by one dealer on behalf of another dealer should be regarded as uh, bona fide in good faith. Uh, I would also the nominal quotes are for informational purposes only. You know, that's like what's on your statement, or if you call the bond dealer and say, hey, I'm looking for 
a nominal quote, that means you're not ready to transact business. You're just looking for information. So the answer here is A. When executing an OTC agency transaction, so that means I'm an order entry firm and I'm buying it from a market maker on behalf of my customer. A, a member firm may enter position a third party if the total cost of proceeds are equal to the best prevailing interdealer market for the security. In other words, can I have somebody uh, on my behalf do this, a third party? Uh, that sounds okay. Let's see. Uh, interposition a third party if the total costs are reasonably related, reasonably re related. So let's see, best prevailing. Mm -hmm. You know, the third party, there has to be some benefit here. So I don't see any benefit to the putting the third party in the trade in A. I don't see any benefit in B. Not participate. No, we can interposition. What we need is to have a superior execution. So let's see what D says. Yeah, interposition a third party, the total cost is better. There we go. Ding, 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 ding. You know, where this comes up is like where maybe I'm a smaller order entry firm and you're a bigger, larger order entry firm. And I expect you might get a better deal from the market maker than me. I say, hey, can you call on my behalf? And so the answer is uh, D. So interposition is one of those you got to be a little careful on. It can be a problem like it was in A and B or not as it is in D. Uh, which of the following statements regarding FINRA rules on public communication are true? If a testimonial is given, disclosure is required if they've been paid. That's absolutely correct. One is true. You know, the best example I can recall of this was Joe Montana was on TV talking about the Franklin uh, funds, mutual funds. Franklin Templeton Fund Distributors is a FINRA member firm. Now, the ad agency didn't know we had this rule. They forgot to disclose that Joe isn't there because he's been dollar cost averaging and the mutual funds, he's there because he's being paid. So one is true. Uh, two, if a market research report, the performance of previous recommendations cannot be shown. No, they can. But if I do, then I got to show you the entire universe of my selections for 12 months. So two is not true. Uh, three, in a market research report, disclosure is required if the member firm was in the selling group in any of the company's securities within the past year. year. That's underwriters. Uh, four, if a market research report disclosure is required, if the member firm is a market maker, yes, it's one and four. One and four. Uh, the MSRB is empowered to do which of these? Question 63. They don't have enforcement power. They, you know, what they do is they publish rules. So they write and interpret rules. Yeah, that's exactly right. A rules, administrative rules, D rules, definitional rules, G rules, general rules. So one is true. They establish testing for municipal securities representative supervisors. That's true. They levy fines. Well, as I just mentioned, they have no enforcement power. They suspend or expel. No, they have no enforcement power. So it is one and two. Uh, question 64, how often must a municipal securities dealer review its written supervisory procedures? A lot of things are annually, like reviewing our surety bond. Uh, lots of stuff are annually. So it is annually. It is annually. I think this is funny. I was at a <laughs> FINRA District 1 kind of uh, luncheon. And this is when these first came out. I thought, what the heck is this thing? It sounds like a put. And, uh, you know, it sounds like to call it a reverse convertible, I think disguises that it's a put option. Uh, uh, and the put option, is the person who can put it is the issuer. So uh, bonds embedded with a put option permitting issuers the right to convert the bond into shares that are is known as a reverse convertible. That is certainly an area of heightened suit suitability in terms of investors understanding that, right? So, you know, it's heightened supervision here. Because, you know, who, who knows if a retail client understands what that means. <laughs> so, Every customer account statement must include uh, all the following or each of the following except a mark to market and market value of each option position. Well, yeah, that'd be nominal quotes. That sounds reasonable. Unrealized profits and losses as of the statement date. No, we don't have to put that on there. We don't want to. A legend requesting the information to tell us, advise us if there's been material changes. Yes, all the security and money positions, indeed. So the answer is uh, B. 
Uh, which of these statements is not true regarding SP? Uh, customers need not be given an annual privacy st uh, notice. That is true. That is very true and very testable. Uh, consumers must be given an initial privacy notice. That is true and uh, is very testable. Uh, customers must be may be provided privacy information uh, on internet web pages. That's true. Uh, D, customers must be given the disclosures on a separate piece of paper. No, I mean, that's kind of silly. So, D. Uh, 68, Mr. Hawkins sets up a revocable trust for the benefit of his adult daughter, Madeline. His wife may draw from it only if she needs to. The income on the trust will be taxed to, will be tra taxed to. So it's going to be taxed to Mr. Hawkins as the uh, donor. Uh, which of the following may serve as grounds for the statutory disqualification of a person from association with a municipal securities dealer? Uh, pre Roman number one, previous suspension of the, the his registration as a municipal securities representative. True. Uh, previous denial, the application for registration. True. Previous revoca re revocation, that means it's been revoked. True. Previous uh, offense causing suspension. Yeah, one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Uh, 70, when it comes to social media, associates of the member firm must understand the distinction between interactive and static content. Which of the following is static? Comments. No, you're putting comments on Facebook. That's active. You're actually on the keyboard. Tweets, active. Email, active. A broker dealer's profile, given that answer set. D. A new customer at the branch inquires of an agent about the difference between closed-end investment companies and open-end investment companies. Uh, the best answer the agent should give is that closed-end investment companies uh, trade at a price independent of the NAV, right? B. An investment company invests in a fixed portfolio of municipal or corporate bonds. It is classified, so fixed portfolio passive management means unit investment trust, uh, D. A registered rep of your branch has a hedge fund client who trades equities, but lately has been taking large positions, or my word, sorry, positions in different mutual funds. As the branch office manager reviewing the account activity, you see 10 distinct unsolicited purchases for m and International Fund of 8000 as well as uh, 12 separate redemptions of LMN, oh, Trans-Pacific Fund for 7,000 each. Uh, what should you be most concerned for as a sales supervisor? Uh, yeah, it sounds like uh, the thing I'm worried about here is uh, market timing, right? You know, it's, you know, market timing isn't, you know, illegal, it just might be unethical, but it's a... A representative who carefully evaluates a customer's risk tolerance, financial situation, investment objectives, engages in an unethical practice when he fails to discuss a company's working capital position because the tech customer doesn't want to be bothered with the details. Uh, that doesn't sound material to me. He auto rec automatically recommends securities that are highly regarded by other agents. No, every situation is unique. So I think that's going to be a problem. That's called a blanket recommendation. We shouldn't be doing that. Underestimates a company's interest rate risk as a result of cautious accounting practices. Now, buy or sell uh, securities with exceptionally high commissions. No, it's going to be A. And remember, it's uh, usually we don't give uh, blanket recommendations to people. Woohoo! Question 75, halfway there. I've been putting off for a long, long time doing these explicated practice exams for the 9, the 10, the 24, because it's a real slog, even for myself. So uh, hopefully you're finding it uh, worthwhile 
Uh, you might want to take a pause on these things. I know these explications of practice exams are long. My channel is known for long form content. You can always hit pause uh, now. You're halfway. Take a break, whatever, you know, float your boat, so to speak. Anyways, I'm doing it even though it's a real slog for a couple reasons. You know, uh, I appreciate that the channel's going to have its second year anniversary next uh, Tuesday. And uh, a huge part of that success has been nines and tens and 24s who refer people to us. So uh, that's the reason for it. But anyway, you want to take a break now would be the time to do so. Under MSRB rules, under MSRB rules, in which of the following transactions must a control relationship between a municipal dealer and an issuer be disclosed to customers of that dealer? A uh, new issue in which the dealer is a syndicate man manager member? Yes. The idea here is maybe I sit on the city council uh, and I'm also a managing member of the uh, broker dealer. A uh, new issue in which the dealer is a member of the selling group? Yes. A secondary transaction where we're an agent? Yes. Or principally, yes, one, two, three, and four, A. I think we uh, did this one already. Maybe I'm just losing it, but uh, it was market timing. A uh, principal of a member firm, 77, must review which of the following? Retail communications, indeed. Confirmations, no. Order tickets, yes. New account forms, uh, yes. One, three, and four. You're definitely going to get a couple questions on anti-money laundering. You should definitely know in the WSPs, we have to have a section on AML. Uh, we have to have an AML, AML officer. Surprising enough, doesn't have to be registered. Excuse me. Um, we have to do an AML test annually. And this is about the uh, currency transaction report for transaction in excess of uh, 10,000. And that goes to uh, what's called FinCEN, which is a part of the uh, Treasury Department. So the answer is D. Uh, James, the quarterback of a National Football League team, deliberately misstated material information in the private sale of securities owned. Uh, James claims he is not subject to the anti-fraud provisions of the securities laws because he's not a registered agent. And secondly, it was exempt from registration requirements. Which of the following is true? You know, there's no one and nothing that's exempt from anti-fraud provisions. No one and nothing is exempt. So, you know, James, the quarterback, isn't allowed to rip people off. Uh, just because, you know, he's not registered. So the anti-fraud provisions of securities laws do not apply because he's not. <laughs> no, it looks like Dean Dolan's pitched the wrong button. Boom. Uh, there we go. The anti-fraud provisions apply to any person a uh, connection with the offer or sale of securities. So no one and nothing is exempt from the anti-fraud provisions. Question 80, the term used to describe a broker-dealer contacting a margin account a client with a demand for additional funds is known as maintenance. We're not going to maintain the position if you don't come up with some additional uh, cash or securities. Otherwise, we're going to liquidate. So the answer is C. All the following are true except, so we're looking for something that is false. A broker dealer may outsource solicitation of proxies from customers whose stock is held in street name. So that is true. A broker dealer may outsource email services uh, to non-member third-party service provider. That's true. A broker dealer may outsource monitoring to defect churning, such trading, and unusual trading parent members. That's true. A broker dealer can outsource the solicitation of potential new customers uh, to third parties. No, you know, that's function one of being a broker and content outline on series seven, right? I think we talked about the question 82 earlier. Nominal quotes are for informational purposes only. You know, customers get confused about it all the time. Hey, what's I, I need some quotes on my meetings. Let me give you some nominal quotes. That's for informational purposes only. 
And general securities law and rules require that a broker's dealer's social media policies. Remember, we talked about this over and over and over again. It should be in WSPs. Your written supervisory procedures, so committed to written form and communicated firm wide. Uh, D is and dog. Eighty four under federal rules, a producing branch office manager should be supervised. So, who is the most likely person they would be reporting to? Uh, you know, give me a bunch of these, right? The regional manager being. A municipal securities dealer may advertise the sale of bonds in which on the date of uh, publication it has no position provided that the bonds are advertised as subject to availability. That's true. The dealer has no reason to believe that the bonds are unavailable. That's true. The dealer would attempt to acquire the bonds if contacted by potential customers. Yeah, what we mean here is no bait and switch. We just can't put something in there we know that would drive phone calls, right? The advertisement states the bonds are subject to change and yield to price. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Uh, 86, as several market makers agree to trade with each other for the purpose of causing heavy trading volume, they are involved in prohibited uh, activities. That's called giving the false impression volume. It's classic. It's called painting the tape. You know, it's the idea is people watching the tape go by on CNBC will say, ooh, something's up, something up. A classic fraudulent device. Uh, I, I would be pre prepared for phraseology of giving the false impression of volume as a prohibited practice and is known as. Question 87, over and over and over again, regulators have said they make no distinction between emails and snail mail. There's no separate uh, kind of standard. So as a supervisor, you're receiving mail from Joe complaining about stock trade several days earlier. You should treat the email as a written complaint. Eighty-eight under MSRB rules, a municipal securities broker dealer opening an account for an employee of a number another member firm must send duplicate confirms uh, to the employer after each trade. Eighty-nine, a 65-year-old man called the branch manager to complain about a recent exchange of a deferred variable annuity and performed, uh, and performed by a new representative. The customer said he was unaware that there would be charges associated with the transaction and was shocked the account value diminished substantially during a recent downturn in the market. The manager should do which of these? You make the call. Excuse me. Promptly refund the customer's losses and unwind the transaction? No. Document the facts of the complaint and submit? No. There we go. Interview. Now, I would like you to learn the information. I would like you to learn the information. But uh, I like C because it's too long to be wrong. Too long to be wrong. We only use test-taking tricks when we don't know the answer. But, you know, guys who write tests, you know, Bill James is my uh, friend, and he's in, the guy writing is in charge of this content. Anyways, you know, uh, he would be upset if... He knew he fell prey to this because test writers sometimes write their, you know, answer, and then they reverse engineer the distractors, the wrong answers, and the question. So that's why the trick works. In addition to the normal required interdealer trade reporting submitted to the National Securities Clearing Corporation, G14 requires all the following except it does not require transaction fees. Uh, question 91, looks like we might want to try our too long to be wrong again. <laughs> An account exec submits a buy order on behalf of a customer. Next day, notices the trade was placed erroneously in another customer's account. She asked the branch office manager for assistant. assistance. A solution to the problem would be, yeah, it sounds like a cancel and rebuild, right? Uh, contact the customer, now retrain the register rep on correct procedures and approval requirements, and how to move the trade to the correct customer account and record the reason for the move in the branches cancel and rebuild system. Yeah. And then, you know, you as a supervisor should pay attention to that uh, cancel and rebuild to make sure there's no shenanigans going on there. That in the error account as well. 
92, a few of your firm's investors have sought to interact with the registered rep through convenient text messaging apps and chat services. This is so current. Uh, what statement is the most accurate? Text messaging chat service only occasionally used are not required to be maintained. No, you have to be able to uh, maintain, you know, the record capture this, capture this communication, right? The firm uh, must retain records of communications related to all forms of communication uh, taking uh, uh, t undertaken by its registered rep. That sounds pretty good, right? Uh, let's see. Let's see what else we got. The firm must maintain records of communication related to its business that are made through test matching and chat. I like that one even a little tighter. So let's go for D, right? So all forms of communication. Now, we're just talking about this particular form of communication. So uh, D. Uh, 93, which of these would not be considered a fraudulent practice? An advisor tells a client that they're approved. Oh, man. Hey, you should know the minute we hear the word approved, it goes out. An advisor omits a material fact. So that's definitely fraudulent. An advisor correctly advises the client, but the client ends up losing money. That happens all the time. That's okay. That was in good faith. C. Under SEC rules, which of the following events require a broker-dealer to furnish a copy of the account record to the customer? Opening the new account? Yes. Change a customer's name address? Yes. Change a customer's investment objective? Yes. Change in customer's employment? Uh, yes. D, one, two, three, four. An investment company may change its investment objective only with a majority vote of the shares. So aggregate shareholders voting the majority of the shares. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the way they say things on the test, the way you know Kaplan words it. But you know, they're trying to word it like you can encounter it on the test. 